Hi friends, I've actually wanted to make a video about economy related things. Not a financial advice, but I wanted to share some past historical examples what lost dark assets were huge investment opportunities in the past. I had my editor friend help me out. I don't have much knowledge on WoW Classic, but he explained it through a comparison with the game. Please take it as a fun reference. Again, these were fun remembrance for me to share with you guys including what actually happened for Korea server in the past. So I made this video to hope to give you guys some insight or just a fun story time. As everyone know, World of Warcraft is a very famous game that has a long history. Expansions are still coming out as of now. There were a few users who have wanted to play the older versions due to having a strong heavy fanbase in the past, which resulted into the release of WoW Classic. The reason why I'm talking about WoW Classic is because few of my best experienced Lost Ark friends compare the current version of the Korean server, the global server, differences is basically like the current WoW and the WoW Classic. Since the patches of WoW Classic is exactly following the retail versions, People can experience the past points of the game, like riding a time machine. This means WoW veterans have been able to estimate WoW Classic's auction house and various material economics more than fresh users. However, some were correct and some were not. Since the patches were following the retail version exactly, it gave everyone a fair chance to invest, but not everyone has been profited from this. First season is users were just simply lazy and missed the opportunity. And another reason is where people were too experienced at the game for the past few years, so people were a lot smarter utilizing proper materials in the game at that time. A good example, as my friend told me, was the Ankarash, or AQ. He said that it's critical item where it can cover your nature resistance, and majority of the best in slot items were rare drops globally. All users had enough time and opportunity to farm this, so a small amount of players farmed it and hoarded all the items. Only few items were appearing month or two before release, and price being at least 10 times more during release. Another example he told me was the Goblin Sapper Charge, a bomb you can hurt yourself but deal big damage around you. Apparently DPS players have been using this in a raid which costs lower tier life items like Mithra or Magery Cloth has been increased in average price compared to the higher tier life skills. So why is this important? AQ was something users have missed out on opportunity and Goblin Sapper Charge is an opportunity a user could make a fortune if they had some sort of sports site. As all of you already know, economy in RPG games feels like crypto markets. For example, in Lost Ark Korea, there has been a time where the Shiba Inu pet was on sale. During that time, the developers were not giving away free pets as much as now, so there were some users who have bought massive number of pets to resell in the future. Problem is that this pet was sold more often and even given out free at the time, to a point where the price of the pet was actually dropped enough for these resellers to not make a profit. AQ and WoW Classic was a rare guaranteed opportunity, but to prevent something like a Shiba Inu pet case in Lost Ark, you will need some foresight to cover of your investment choices. For example, as of now, the first generation rare avatars, which are not out in the US yet, has about 150k gold in value dependent on classes, which is about $120 in value. These avatars were being sold as boxes in the past and they're about $24, $32 in value, so they definitely increased in value right now. And since gold value is very unstable, it is important for you to invest very cautiously. Korean Lost Ark server has more people who are not honing than people who hone. So the gold value is consistently dropping in Korea due to more gold being generated and then being spent, which is about 2400 gold for 100 blue crystal. It's actually really, really expensive. So blue crystals are actually really, really expensive because more people are having more gold. However, looking at the global servers, there are more people that spend gold than generating gold. So the crystal prices are really low compared to the Korean server. However, you will notice when more content that can generate gold comes out, like Legion Raids, the prices of the crystals will rise for sure. Another cool tip is Lost Ark has 6 combat stats. Out of these combat stats, Expertise, Domination, and Endurance isn't quite as used often. However, these stats aren't completely useless. For something like Endurance, it is completely useless for PvE, but people who are aiming for high-end guild content and be successful in open world PvPs like various islands and Rowan in the future, Endurance is actually pretty widely used for majority of the users here. As for Domination, increased damage during Stagger. With Broken Bone Engraving and High Domination Combat Stat, it is actually used in a tactic for PvP and PvE, but for specific static group only. For PvE, make sure to know it does not work for static groups that does not have the coordinated Stagger. So do not build this unless you are 100% sure you know what you are planning for. For Expertise, since it increases your Stagger points by a lot, it is actually used in some of the bust mechanics. Due to some of the Legion Raids require high stagger points, few carries actually have some side builds that has a bit of expertise. The global server won't need to worry about this for a very long time, but it is sometimes used in the Broshaza bus in Korea. Also for battle items, global servers do not use many battle items as of now, but when the first Legion Raid Valton comes out, battle items become more crucial for clear. 
For example, when you're fighting Valton in the second game, players in the Korean server still brings destruction bombs and corrosive bombs. It is still mandatory to bring them even if people are overgeared due to Valton's armor being 20% additional defense. Since you need to break off his armor, 7 people need to bring destruction bomb and 1 person need to bring the corrosive bomb to break both of his armors off the early phase. If his armor isn't broken off, you often lack DPS to see berserk mode for Valton. Destruction bombs are being used sometimes due to Argos, but I believe corrosive bombs aren't as popular right now in the global servers. As for engravings based on the PTR server these days, engraving prices are very unstable right now. Since majority of the swiftness classes are being affected at the moment, engraving such as increased mass is more expensive than ever before at the moment. Also the Korean server in the past, engravings before class engraving renewal has been cheap. And after the renewal, prices have been skyrocketed. Some examples like Scouter's Legacy of Evolution, Shadowhunter's Demonic Impulse, and Berserker's Mayhem engraving was a great example. The video was a fun suggestion for a few items that could be expensive in the future, but I do not recommend investing into any of them without you guys researching it yourself. I felt that it would be fun to share some of the information I've heard from my Korean veteran friends. If you're planning to invest your gold into some assets, researching and having foresight will be pretty important for you to make a huge amount of gold. Again, this was a fun and simple chat about the gold economy and the potential investment opportunities so far. But if you guys are interested, it is crucial to do your own research and find your own investment opportunities. We can always talk about it in the stream too. I think it's one of the many fun things you can have in an MMO as well. With that being said, this wraps up the short talk video. I hope I can share something more in the future regarding this topic. As always, thanks everyone. Bye!